opponent for this evening. Here he is, 23-year-old Marty Jakubowski out of Whiting, Indiana, 37-0 with eight knockouts. And when he's not fighting, a sociology student at Purdue University. Jakubowski, no stranger to adversity, back in 1988, he survived a near-fatal gang stabbing in the lungs. Told he'd never fight again, he returned to the ring and won the Indiana lightweight title. The baby-faced Marty Jakubowski, in order to make weight, he stepped on the scale early this morning after a full breakfast, plus a load of quarters in his pockets. Usually, it's the other way around. And here is Julio. Julio Cesar Chavez, who surprisingly enough did not get interested in boxing until he was 16. Had only 13 amateur fights before turning pro in 1980. Won his first world title in 84. The rest, as they say, is history. Tonight, he tunes up for a February 20th fight with Greg Haugen in Mexico City. The three-time world champ, the complete package as far as ring skills, could someday be regarded as the best all-time. And about tonight, he simply says, I'll be brief. To the tail of the tape, at 30, Chavez, seven years older than Jakubowski, a half-inch height advantage for Jakubowski, the weight Chavez, 144, and Jakubowski really had to work hard to get to 142. Half-inch reach advantage for Jakubowski. The Nevada rules, 10-point must system, three judges scoring the fight, no standing eight count, three knockdown rule in effect, only the referee can stop the fight, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. So here at the Mirage Ballroom in Las Vegas, Nevada, just about set for the introductions, Chavez and Jakubowski. Back we go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and sports fans joining us around the world, we welcome you to the beautiful Mirage Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada, as Don King Productions and the Mirage, in association with Ten Goose Boxing, present the main event of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Gannam, commissioners Dr. James Nave, Luther Mack, Bruce Lane, and Nat Carasali, Chief Inspector Mark Ratner. Positions at ringside, Dr. Flip Pomansky, Dr. Al Copana, Dr. William Berliner. Time keepers at the bell, also keeping count to the knockdowns, we have Al Bicic and James Cavan. And now presenting the judges at ringside. We have Patricia Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Rock. All right, fans, here we go. The main event of the evening, a super lightweight special attraction scheduled. Ten rounds of boxing, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Presenting the referee in charge of this bout, he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Carlos Padilla. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, and he is wearing solid black trunks. Hailing from Whiting, Indiana, he weighed in at 142 pounds. With a fine record of 37 wins and no losses, he has eight wins by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated Marty Jakubowski. And his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the red corner, is the five-time world champion in three weight divisions, really needing no introduction the world over. He is wearing white trunks with blue trim and fighting out of Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. His weight is at 144 pounds. His tremendous record represents the longest undefeated streak in boxing today with 83 victories, no defeats, and 68 wins by way of knockout. Introducing one of boxing's pound-for-pound -pound greatest, the WBC super lightweight champion of the world, El Gran Campeón Mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Carlos Padilla. Who is the team second here? Team second. Team second? Yes. Team second. Okay. You were already given instructions in your respective dressing room. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Any question? Okay, touch glove and good luck. This is scheduled for 10. It is another non-title bout. Julio Cesar Chavez and Marty Jakubowski. And here we go. Jakubowski, who's fought mostly out of the Midwest, has a reputation of being cocky. But when we asked him about that, he said, not for this fight. I'm not cocky. He did tell us he's less nervous for Chavez than for a club fighter. He said, much like Compass against Haugen, I have nothing to lose. But Chavez... As we said earlier, the complete package generally starts out in deliberate fashion, working the body, accumulating punches, although he came out relatively fast against Hector Camacho. Well, with Camacho, he really had something he wanted to prove. He wanted to dominate and do it in every round. He really wanted to stop him, but to Camacho's credit, he showed what he's made of. And this young fighter here, Jakubowski, is supposed to be extremely quick and elusive, get out, gets out of the way very quickly, but we're going to see what his chin is like in a little while, I'm sure. Now, Jakubowski said, I'm not going to try to punch with him. He feels that Chavez is not in the greatest shape. I can't tell you how many fighters have said that. <laughs> have laid on the canvas rethinking that thought. Right. I mean, he's always coming in. He's got a bad back. He's got a bad knee. His hands hurt him. He's just had the flu, and he knocks everybody out. He's got maybe one of the longest streaks going that I can remember in boxing. Punishing, almost surgical like with his pinpoint accuracy, precision. Vicious right hand, talking about the Chavez, legendary left hook, always coming forward, relentless. Very economical. Showing, showing a good jab, a lot of movement, which we expected from him. He's not going to stand in front of Chavez. And Chavez doing his usual, slow, working in, walking. He'll eventually start to unload a few to the body, work his way up to the head, and see what the young fighter has. Jakubowski surviving a near-fatal gang stabbing back on the 4th of July of 1988. Told he would never box again. It was at a carnival disrupted by street gangs. He was running when panic broke out. He got stabbed in the back, which punctured a lung. And prior to the stabbing, he had run up nine straight wins in between fights, attended Purdue University at Calumet with a great point average of 3.9. So, uh, and, you know, in talking with him yesterday, very uh, nice young man and a bright kid. That was an awful lot of information to get into one sentence. Yeah. He went through three different things there. Not easy, Bertie. Well, nothing new here, is there, Bobby? Just the no. relentless chase by Chavez, just waiting to put in a few little body shots to remind him of what's coming. And uh, 
and Jakubowski's uh, defense is boxing nicely. He's jabbing, he's doing what he wants. He has no idea what's in store for him. Not that it'll matter in the long run. He's actually winning the round, Jakubowski, with a, a constantly good scoring jab and a little movement. His defense isn't too bad. He seems to be able to see the punch as well. But how long he can run and move, how much energy that it takes, and you know about Chavez, he only gets stronger and better as the fight goes on. Chavez corner. I said, don't let this guy get big. I mean, they almost conceded that he lost that first round, and he said, don't let him get big. Get right on him. And look at this. He just got right on. He just did what they told him. I said, okay, now close the distance and get on. Close the distance was the word that they wanted to have. When we were talking with Jakubowski, Jakubowski yesterday, he said, he's going to look at it as 10 three-minute fights. And his corner just told him, you won the first fight, you won the first fight, there's nine more, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> he said, the good news is you won the first fight. The bad news is there's nine more of those. And it's against Chubbett. Jakubowski fighting for the 16th time this year. He said, well, look out, I know nobody knows me, but I'll do my best to screw up that February 20th card. You can't knock his courage, but the knockout records speak for themselves. 68 for Chavez, 8 for Jakubowski. And he just learned uh, the uh, terrible lesson, what happens when you try to jab, and you don't pull back that jab with Chavez. Chavez will cross with a right in a minute. Chavez's punches are also so damaging, I don't think that Jakubowski's ever been exposed to a half the puncher and the damaging type of blows that he's going to be receiving tonight. Yeah, that's a, that's a quality that we spoke of earlier, Bobby, that... Uh, Guys get in with you and they don't realize the difference in quality of opponents in punching. When you get in with a guy like this, everything hurts. It hurts through the shoulder, hurts when they hit you on the gloves. Combination by Jakubowski, but just hitting the gloves of Chavez. Jakubowski says, I don't want to tell my grandchildren sitting on my lap someday. I gave up six pounds and took Chavez the distance. He says, that's the wrong version of the story. In my version, I win. Well, he can still call his kids up. Chav is so used to guys running away from him. This is what he gets all the time. That's why the fight with Norris would be interesting, and Pernell Whitaker would be interesting, and uh, Greg Howard. Whoa, nice right hand. I'll tell you what, if Chavez ever does get in the ring with both Whitaker and Norris, and if he could beat them both, he could run for president of the entire world. <laughs> At least south of the border, all the way down to Argentina. He is the man. Well, Steve Barhood raised a good question. Should Chavez get by Haugen, then Norris, and Sweet Pea Whitaker, and hit the century mark in terms of victories, could he be called the best of all time someday? Well, certainly in his way, he is. No question about that. Final 20 seconds of the second. Jakubowski just took a beautiful right hand dead on the button and kind of waved Chavez in as if to say that wasn't so big. They make him tough in Whiting, Indiana. Jakubowski has fought mostly out of the Midwest as we head for the bell. Well, another interested spectator, Greg Haugen had a controversial unanimous decision over Mexican Armando Compass earlier tonight. A decision that was met with boos by the crowd here at the Mirage. He will be fighting Julio Cesar Chavez February 20th, the Grand Slam in Mexico City on pay-per-view. And that fight could have gone out the window had he lost to Armando Compass. 
Here are these right hands that we speak of. He is so devastating, so used to guys. Look at that jab, boom. You don't leave a jab out there with him. If it's soft, he's gonna get killed in the same thing now. Not only that, but he backs him up and he times him perfectly, slips the jab right over the top. And to the young fellow's credit, he took it reasonably well and offered some offense back in return. Yes, you have to give credit to the Boilermaker because he is right in there. He, he, uh, his plan is to box, his plan is to stay away from him, not get in a punch out, but you just can't avoid it with Chavez. Heard he making reference to uh, the fact that Jakubowski attends part-time Purdue University in Calumet. And interesting, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez electing to stand between both rounds. And he seems extremely comfortable and relaxed, talking to fans, smiling in the corner. Well, he doesn't figure to be here long, so he might sit down and dirty his pants. He's got beautiful, clean pants on. Is that it? Round three, it is scheduled for 10, non-title bout, super lightweights, Julio Cesar Chavez in the white with the uh, black trim. Krakowski spinning Chavez around. I Carlos Padilla didn't like it. Thing you'll rarely see for Chavez to let a guy spin him out of a corner. Ooh. Starting to work that body now with that left hook reaching around and banging him. He wants to take his legs away. After all, we've never seen the young man before. We don't know how long he can keep up that type of movement. But Chavez wants to stop the movement now. The movement, the backpedaling continues by Jakubowski, but Chavez continues to land. Boring in is Chavez. Jakubowski is getting an idea of what it feels like to be chased by a lion. Chavez stalking Jakubowski. You don't have enough power to make Julio Cesar Chavez at least put his hands up when he comes in. Very impressive combination there by Jakubowski. But again, they don't hurt. They're quick, they're slappish, and he doesn't have the power to keep him off. Now, Terry Norris, on the other hand, possesses tremendous power there is a fight that's got to be discouraging bobby to a guy who's letting loose with probably all he's got and it doesn't even affect Chavez. yeah i'm sure you know that feeling it is certainly dis disheartening but it's something you got to you got to deal with you got to be ready to go to distance in that case never stops coming forward. Chavez tuning up for his date with Greg Haugen, final 10 seconds of the third. Subject of Greg Haugen, our Steve Farhood, the editor in chief of Ring Magazine, standing by. Sitting here with Greg Haugen. Greg, you got a great first row seat. You held up your end of the bargain. What do you think of Julio? I think he's coming on. Uh, he's starting to wear down Marty. Uh, you know, he's looking good. He's doing uh, doing the right thing. And you know, he throws a lot of low blows, though, because he throws a lot of body shots. But he looks like he's coming on. But uh, Marty's doing a good job. You know, I'm surprised Marty's lasted as long as he has. He's, you know, he's jabbing good and he's moving good, but uh, he's kind of fighting scared right now. He needs to start jabbing and hooking off his jab. Anything you learning so far from this fight for yourself? Uh, you know, I, I pretty much know how I'm going to fight Julio. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go out there and go at him. Uh, you know, I'll be in a lot better shape. Uh, you know, I got 10 rounds of work tonight, so I'm happy. All right, Greg Haugen, thank you. Back to Steve Albert. All right, Steve, Greg Haugen, who says that He'll never fight anybody as strong as me, referring to Julio Cesar Chavez, but Haugen certainly had his hands full with Armando Campos earlier tonight. Chavez once again barreling in on Jakubowski. Round four. Haugen said, I'll, I'll, I'll make Chavez start thinking twice about coming in on me. Well, we'll see. Something he makes a good point about, he's got to use a hard jab and a good, powerful right hand keep Chavez off if that's possible and that's what he's been working on. 
all credit to Marty Jakubowski. He's trying. He's, he's just that his punches don't have that kind of effect on Chavez. Chavez has walked right through just about everybody that he's fought, and he's doing it again here. He's just walking through this guy. Besides his good legs, the kid has pretty decent eyes. He's punches, blocks him well, and he steps and spins around. Uh, he's got potential to be put together with the right sight, right set of fights. To maybe go on and do something. Yeah, I agree with you. He's, he's got potential to do well. I think he's overmatched here by a mile. I can see where he's had success on the club circuit. Nice machine gun-like combination, but, you know, those punches don't have much effect against a guy like Chavez. But on the Midwest club circuit, I can see where he could be effective. He's 37-0. Jakubowski. Look out. You've got to get out of that corner. The crowd responding to everything by Chavez. And showing some good heart, waving him on and then firing the right hand of his own. Yeah, good heart on and Marty Jack Jakubowski. Good heart. And a pretty darn good chin. So, so far, I'd say it's been a pleasant surprise, gentlemen. I don't think there's uh, any question. A lot of people thought this would end uh, early, given even with the history of Chavez gets off to the deliberate start. But a very game, Marty Jakubowski. No knockdowns in the fight. Not much blood. Combination to the head by Jakubowski. But that's like hitting a rock. It's like hitting granite. Cuts are beginning to open up. It's, a, it's incredible the destruction that Chavez does with such few punches. Chavez usually, generally gets a cut on the bridge of the nose. Never seems to affect him, though. Uh, but look, look at the face uh, of Marty. Uh, he's already got a cut over the right eye, and he's just all red. It's amazing how much damage he does to the facial tissue. As you used to say, it's getting red and ugly. <laughs> That was a nice hard right hand, another right hand by Chavez. Chavez stepping it up. Jakubowski, if I'm not mistaken, saying something. Chavez, yeah, they're just educated punches. That's all you can say. He aims them properly. He lands properly. It's just a beautiful thing to watch him throw a right. You know, as you say, he's coming in. He's backing them up. He knows what he's want, what he wants, what he's looking for. He waits for the hand to drop, and the right hand is right on the money. You know, you saw something funny a moment ago. He has a pillow. They put a pillow on his back stool, on his stool for the corner, and that's because he's had a bad back. And the people who were up interviewing him said he can't sleep. He's been sleeping on the floor. They put a pillow in there so that he will rest easier with his bad back. Of course, you don't see it in this fighting. Boy, I mean, he, he fights like he hasn't got anything wrong with his back. And now he's on the march. Chavez applying the pressure. But the jabs of Jakubowski trying to keep his distance. Chavez swarming. Jakubowski, though, fighting back and says, come on in. He invites him. That could be a mistake against this guy. Yeah, but, but it gladdens your heart to see a kid that's, that's come in here to take his moment and is fighting with everything he's got. He may not be near as good as Chavez, but boy, he's in there and he's fighting hard. All he's credit doing, to him. He's doing himself proud. He's not making any bad uh, showing here. But the blows are starting to tell the experience, the, the skill. It's just all coming to a slow destruction. Yeah, he has now got his hands very, very low. The body punches. Chavez specialty have taken their mark. Look out, here comes Chavez again. He didn't want to hit him anymore. Chavez just said to the, to the referee, you want me to continue to hit him? He just said to him, you want me to hit him some more? But Jakubowski just standing there and taking it, and then he's hitting back. Somehow being a boxer and a humanitarian is a contradiction of phrases. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Jakubowski in dire trouble. This could be it. But somehow he's staying on his feet. Tremendous heart by Jakubowski midway through the fifth. And now back comes Jakubowski. 
Kowalski and partially stunning Chavez. Stunning may be too hard a word. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was a smile. <laughs> it, 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 surprise may be a word that's a little bit more fit than stunning. Well, stun, surprise, it's yeah, all the yeah. same to me. Stunning in boxing is a different phrase where you get all, like, blinky-eyed. Kind of like if he snuck up on him in the dark and maybe yelled in his ear. It said, boo. The guy said, oh, what a surprise. Okay. Gee, give the kid a break. I, I think he's doing wonderfully well. I mean, can go home and tell his kids he did fight. Yeah. The great Chavez, and he lasted this many rounds. Well, how'd you like to be Jack Kaposki? You got to fight Chavez, and on top of that, you know that Chavez slept on the floor the night before. Well, it's nothing compared to getting stabbed in the ribs and puncturing your... I don't want you to say that all over again. No, I won't. I, I didn't want to hear that the first time. That was a long dissertation. But that, that hardens a fighter, I would say, uh, when you sleep on the floor the night before. Actually, I sleep on the floor many times because it helps my back, too. <laughs> Combination to the head by Chavez. And, and that is almost the end. Yeah. That is very close to the end here. I think everybody in that ring, all three people, want to quit right now. Look at the pillow on Chavez's stool. Uh, he, it's huge, but he won't sit down. I think Chavez is really trying to close the show here. He sort of feels sorry for the kid and says, all right, here, here's enough to quit, but the kid doesn't quit. That's early in the fight. Now, watch later in the round, Bobby. You know, Jakubowski, again, he's trying as all he can, but it's just, a, it's just target practice now. He can bend over, take the ribs. He can take the uppercut, throw right hands over the jab. You know, he's just taking his time. I, I think he genuinely doesn't want to hurt the kid. Yeah, I, I think he was hoping that everybody would mercifully call a halt to this between rounds, but... Tough kid. Round okay. six. Scheduled for ten. At one point, there's Chavez with a lunging right. And now Carlos Padilla throws it off and Jeff Dabowski is really upset. Blood streaking for the left side of Jacobowski, and he is really miffed that Carlos Padilla stopped the fight. Last round, Chavez urging Padilla to stop the fight. I think it was well done. Chavez going, what do you want me to do? I don't want to hurt the kid. I don't want to punish him any anymore. Now he's blowing kisses to the crowd. Chavez looking very fresh. I always looks fresh after a workout. This is like nothing to him. I mean, it is so easy for him to, to take these fights. That's why he fights every uh, four or five weeks. He just keeps in shape. That's his method of training. But well, boy, those body attacks, Bobby. Yeah. You had to teach a young boxer what the, the element of a body attack. You'd have to show him films of this guy. I've said it time and time again. He goes to the body and the head in combination better than any fighter I've ever seen. Well, it's not uncommon for Chavez to take non-title fights such as this one, although in most cases he fights them in Mexico, away from the spotlight. Tonight he gave young Marty Jakubowski a place in the sun, a chance to strut his stuff a little bit, but uh, in the end, it's Chavez. All right, we, usually you see some guy stop the fight and say he shouldn't stop the fight. Now, let's take a look at why Cortez thought this fight should be stopped. And these are clean shots that hurt. Now, that Padilla, the, the referee, has been looking very closely. Good chopping right hand. Another one right on the, on the mark. Another one right on the mark. And you see he's folding off. It looks like, it looks like, Marty's just going to fold into the canvas, and he didn't want him to get hit anymore. Let's take a look at it from here. I think personally that maybe Padilla was just giving in to the wishes of Chavez. You know, he was showing him that, listen, I can hurt this kid whenever I want to. Why don't you save him? You know, let him go home and fight another day, and that may be what it was. Two big right hands from a guy like Chavez is, is enough to convince any referee, no matter the most cold-blooded of them. 
let's take a look. Just watch the right hand. Just look at, concentrate on the right hand and the jaw and the way he takes it. Look, one, he's sliding over. Now you can see he's almost out. Two, he's really gone on the way. One more and he's planted into the canvas. Thank goodness they didn't give it to him. I think that's great. I think that's just the way it should be. Padilla, one of the best referees uh, in the world, one of the most respected. You have to respect uh, his uh, view of the action. This, uh, even though Jakubowski was very courageous, he was taking a lot of punishment from this man, Julio Cesar Chavez. Let's get the official announcement from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time, 18 seconds in round number six. The referee in charge, Carlos Padilla, stops the contest. Winner by way of technical knockout, El Gran Campeón Mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez. So the... Mirage Hotel, the site of tonight's boxing triple header here on Showtime Championship Boxing. We are just about set for some post-fight reaction up in the ring. You see the cluster, you see the Mexican flag being proudly waved. And we're set to go to the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Uh, my voice, I uh, asked the champion if he thought that fight was correctly stopped. Eh, el público y Freddy quieren saber si esa pelea fue correctamente parada. Sí, hombre, realmente no tenía caso que siguiera. Realmente no quería golpear a este muchachito, sinceramente. Lo estuve consintiendo mucho, la verdad. No quería, no quería golpearlo, la verdad. He didn't want to hurt the kid. He saw the fight, he was willing, but uh, Chavez as a fighter, when he started, he remember when he started, and he didn't want to hurt this kid. Uh, do you think a fight like this prepares you for the big fight against Haugen? ¿Tú te crees que un combate como este te prepara para la pelea de Haugen? Sí. Yeah, yeah. La verdad que a Haugen, a Haugen sí no le voy a tener nada de compasión. With yeah. Haugen, I ain't gonna have no, no pity on Haugen because I'm gonna knock him out because he's got a big mouth. But uh, here we have Haugen who doesn't need an interpreter. What do you got to say for all that? Didn't show me nothing, you know. Couldn't hurt, couldn't hurt the kid, but, you know, it's a tough fight for him, but, uh, you know, I had a tough night too. I thought, 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 I Take it easy, take it easy. Uh, take it easy, take it easy. Que lo coja suave, que mierda que lo va a coger suave. Okay. Bueno. Uh, all right. Now that the action between the two men is going to be resolved in the Grand Slam in February, we will turn to the man who's going to put the Grand Slam on, Don King, and wish the champion goodbye and good night to, to Haugen. And uh, another champ for the promoters. In, in Mexico. Yeah, I hope you show up. Ojalá que tú te llenes. See you in Mexico. All right, Don King. Thank you very much. Ah, quiero mandar un fuerte saludo a todo México. A, a, a mi tierra, a donde nací, a Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, a Hermosillo, a Toluca, a todo México, a Culiacán, Sinaloa, y a todo México le deseo una feliz Navidad y un próspero año nuevo. Que vivan todos felices. Y viva Culiacán y Sonora. Okay. All right, that's a, that's a happy birthday, a happy uh, New Year's. Merry Christmas to most of Mexico and all of Latin America. And now Don King, who's going to put on the Grand Slam. And Don, this may be one of the best promotions in your life. It certainly is. This is the Warner Bees against the Stars. That's what we sold it as. And I want to say Merry Christmas to all the Showtime viewers and Happy New Year. We got a blockbuster year in store for you. And I want to thank Tony Cox for his overwhelming support in bringing the best in quality boxing into your living room. So, you know, if you want to give a person a Christmas gift, Call them up and say, subscribe to Showtime. Call your friend. Tell somebody. Get a Showtime subscription. Because the Grand Slam of Boxing is going to be February the 20th. Four world champions. Four, four, four world champions. And they're going to be all great matches. Azuma Nelson and Gabriel Ruelas. That's the number one contender. Azuma has not lost to a Mexican since the great Salvador Sanchez. The late great Salvador Sanchez. You got Julian Jackson coming on with Gerald McQuillan. That's going to be a knockout, drag out fight. 
All right. Then you got Julio Cesar Chavez that you've seen against Greg Hagen and the great Terry Norris. The great Terry Norris will be taking on Maurice Blocker, and he ain't got no easy evening there. Four world championship fights on the Grand Slam of Boxing on February the 20th in the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. We want you to be there. It's going to be exciting. And right here on January, we got a great card with, with the, uh, Camacho taking on Edwin Rosario in an elimination match. That's an old, long rematch. You and know. that'll be in Puerto Rico. In and Puerto you, Rico. You are merciless. Yeah, you know, you get it all in there. You are merciless. <laughs> and that is... Cordova and Michael Nunn is the world championship fight. fight. So it's pretty just great. The Showtime viewers are getting the best in boxing. All right. If we want to bring new Showtime viewers, so right. give your friend a Christmas gift with a Showtime subscription. To my Christmas gift is to Steve Albert, which I'm throwing to right now. Go, Steve. That's, the, that's the first time I've ever seen the fight doctor speechless. Unbelievable. That is a rarity. Now, Marty Jakubowski didn't like the fact that the fight was stopped, even though he was taking a beating. And in an effort to cover the complete story of this fight, we are set to throw it over to Steve Farhood, who's with Marty Jakubowski and the referee, Carlos Padilla. Steve? Marty Jakubowski, great performance. What did you think of Carlos's stoppage? Um, you know, at the time, I was upset, but Carlos probably did the right thing. Uh, I haven't seen the replay. I wasn't hurt, but I was taking a lot of punishment. And uh, Carlos could see it better than I could. Huh? I'm not pleased, but I'm not mad. What could you do? I, like we say back at home, I'm going to do this till I get this right. It might be three or four times, but I'm going to get this right yet. All right, Marty, thank you very much for a great effort. Carlos? He's young, another day. It was see seemingly with the crowd an unpopular stoppage, but explain your vantage well, point. Well, every time the referee stopped the fight to save the, uh, the boxers, uh, you know, held, it, it's unpopular. But uh, in my uh, opinion, uh, after that round, uh, the, the round that I stopped the fight, right. he is just surviving. Surviving, every time he got hit on the side, he bent, and then they follow up on the face. Yeah, he, he holds, he clings to uh, Chavez. But this one, you know, you don't have to wait for another punch. Right. He got hit on the side, he bent, and then he got hit on the uh, face, he dropped both his hands. So. I can't wait for another punch. He, you know, Chavez is not uh, 